Lithium 6. The three orders. In this chapter, we shall learn about the socio-economic and political changes which occurred in Western Europe between the 9th and 16th century. After the fall of the Roman Empire, many groups of Germanic people from Eastern and Central Europe occupied regions of Italy, Spain and France in the absence of any unifying political force. Military conflicts was frequent, and the need to gather resources to protect one's land became very important. Social organizations were therefore centered on the control of land, its future, were derived from both imperial Roman traditions and German customs. Christianity, the official religion of the Roman Empire from the 4th century, survived the collapse of Rome and gradually spread to Central and Northern Europe. The Church also became a major landholder and political power in Europe. The three orders, the focus of this chapter, are three social categories, Christian priest, land-downing nobles, and peasants. The changing relationship between these three groups was an important factor in shaping European history for several centuries. Over the last 100 years, European historians have done detailed work on the histories of regions, even of individual villages. This was possible because from the medieval period, there is a lot of material in the form of documents details of land ownership, prices and legal cases, for example, churches kept records of births, marriages and debt, which have made it possible to understand the structure of families and of population. The inscription in churches give information about traders, associations and songs and stories give a sense of festival and community activities. All this can be used by historians to understand economic and social life and changes over a long period like increase in population or over a short period like peasant revolts of the many scholars in France who have worked on feudalism. One of the earliest was Bloch, Marc Bloch. 1886-1944 was one of a group of scholars who argued that history consisted of much more than just political history. International relations and the lives of great people, he emphasized the importance of geography in shaping human history and the need to understand the collective behavior or attitudes of groups of people blotches feudal societyism about European, particularly French society between 900 and 1300, describing in remarkable detail social relations and hierarchies, land management and the popular culture of the period. His career was cut short tragically when he was shot by the Nazis in the Second World War. The term medieval era refers to the period in European history between the 5th and the 15th centuries. An introduction to feudalism. The term feudalism has been used by historians to describe the economic, legal, political and social relationship that existed in Europe in the medieval era derived from the German word feud, which map one Western Europe, Scotland, North Sea, England, London, German states, English Channel, Normandy, Saint Denis, Paris, Bingen, Gaul, Burgundy, Austria, Vienna, Portugal, Madrid, Spain, Corsica, Sardinia, 
Adriatic Sea, Rome, Italian States, Sicily, Mediterranean Seas, Africa. means a piece of land it refers to the kind of society that developed in medieval france and later in england and in southern italy in an economic sense feudalism refers to a kind of agricultural production which is based on the relationship between lords and peasants the latter cultivated their own land as well as that of the lord the peasants performed labor services for the lords who in exchange provided military protection. They also had extensive judicial control over peasants. Thus, feudalism went beyond the economic to cover the social and political aspects of life as well, although its roots have been traced to practices that existed in the Roman Empire and during the age of the French king Charlemagne, 742 to 814. Feudalism as an established way of life in large parts of Europe may be said to have emerged later in the 11th century. France and England. Gaul, a prominence of the Roman Empire, had two extensive coastlines, mountain ranges, long rivers, forests, and large tracts of plain suited to agriculture. The Franks, a Germanic tribe, gave their name to Gaul, making it France. From the 6th century, this region was a kingdom ruled by Frankish or French kings who were Christians. The French had very strong links with the church, which were further strengthened when in 800 the Pope gave King Charlemagne the title of Holy Roman Emperor to ensure his support. The head of the Eastern Church in Constantinople had a similar relationship with the Byzantine Empire. Across a narrow channel lay the Iceland of England, Scotland, which in the 11th century was conquered by a duke from the French province of Normandy. Early history of France. 481. Clovis became king of the Franks. 486. Clovis and the Franks begin the conquest of northern Gaul. 496 Clovis and the Franks convert to Christianity. 714 Charles Martel becomes mayor of the palace. 751 Martel's son Pepin disposes the Frankish ruler, becomes king and establishes a dynasty. Wars of conquest double the size of his kingdom. 768 Pepin succeeded by his son Charlemagne or Charles the Great. 800 Pope Leo III crowns Charlemagne as Holy Roman Emperor. 840 onwards raids by Viking from Norway. The Three Orders French priests believed in the concept that people were members of one of the three orders depending on their work. A bishop stated, Here below, some pray, others fly, still others work. Thus, the three orders of society were broadly the clergy, the nobility, and the peasantry. In the 12th century, Abbess Helgrad of Bengen wrote, who would think of herding his entire cattle in one stable, cows, donkeys, sheep, goats without difference therefore it is necessary to establish difference among human beings so that they do not destroy each other god makes distinctions among his flocks in heaven as on earth all are loved by him yet there is no equality among them abbe 
is derived from the Syriac Abba, meaning father, and Abbe was governed by an abbot or an abbess. The second order, the nobility. Priests place themselves in the first order and noble in the second. The nobility had in reality a central role in social processes. This is because they controlled land. This control was the outcome of a practice called vassalage. The kings of France were linked to the papal by vassalage, similar to the practice among the Germanic peoples, of whom the Franks were one. The big landowners, the noble, were vassals of the king, and peasants were vassals of the landowners. A nobleman accepted the king as his senior, senior, and they made a mutual promises. The Signor or Lord, Lord was derived from a word meaning one who provided bread, would protect the vessel, who would be loyal to him. This relationship involved elaborate rituals and exchange of vows taken on the Bible in a church. At this ceremony, the vessel received a written charter or a stuff or even a Lord of earth as a symbol of the land that was being given to him by his master. The noble enjoyed a privileged status. He had absolute control over his property in perpetuity. He could raise troops called feudal levies. The Lord held his own courts of justice and could even coin his own money. French nobles starting for a hint, starting for a hunt, 15th century painting. He was the Lord of all the people settled on his land. He owned vast tracts of land which contained his own dwellings his private fields and pastures and the homes and field of his tenant peasant, his house was called a manor. His private lands were cultivated by peasants who were also expected to act as foot soldiers in battle when required in addition to working on their own farms. The manorial estate. A lord had his own manor house. He also controlled villages. Some lords controlled hundreds of villages. Where prisons lived, a small manorial estate could contain a dozen families, while larger estate might include 50 or 60. Almost everything needed for or daily life was found on the estate, grain was grown in the field, blacksmith and carpenter maintained the lord implements and repaired his weapons, while stone masons look after his building, woman spurns and oak fabric, and children worked in the lord's wine presses. The state had extensive woodlands and forests where the lord's Hunted. They contained a manorial estate, England, 13th century. Common pasture, fallow, Spring planting, autumn planting, closes, meadow, pond, manor house, parent, church, mars, west.
वुडलैंड वस्टी वुडलैंड एक्टिविटी वन डिस्कस सोशल हायर आर्किज बेस्ड ऑन डिफरेंट क्राइटेरिया ऑक्यूपेशन लैंग्वेज वेल्थ एडुकेशन कंपेयर मेडिवल फ्रांस विथ मेसोपोटेमिया एंड द रोमन एम्पायर कम एन दिस पैसेजर्स वर हिज कैटल एंड हिज हॉर्स एज क्रेस्ट देयर वॉज ए चार्ज ऑन द स्टेड एंड ए कैसल फॉर डिफेंस फ्रॉम द थर्टीन सेंचुरी सम कैसल्स वर मेड बिगर for use as a residence for a king knight's family in fact in england castles were practically unknown before the norman conquest and developed as centers of political administration and military power under the feudal system the manor could not be completely self sufficient because salt millstones and metal were had to be obtained from outside sources those lords who wanted a luxurious lifestyle and were keen to buy rich furnishings musical instruments and ornaments not locally produced had to get this from other places the knights from the 9th century there were frequent localized wards in europe the amateur peasant soldiers were not sufficient and good cavalry was needed this led to the growing importance of a new section of people the knights they were linked to the lords just as the latter were linked to the king the lord gave the knight a piece of land called fief and promised to protect it the fief could be inherited it extended to anything between 1000 and 2000 acres or more including a house for a knight and his family a church and other establishment too house his dependents besides a water mill and a wine press as in the feudal manor the land of the fief was cultivated by peasants in exchange the knight paid his lord a regular fee and promised to fight for him in war to keep up their skills knights spent time each day fencing and practicing tactics with dummies a knight might serve more than one lord but his foremost loyalty was to his own lord in france from the 12th century minstrels travel from manor to manor singing songs which told stories partly historical partly invented about brave kings and knights in an age when not to many people could read in manuscript were few this traveling birds were very popular many manors had a narrow balcony above the large hall where the people of the manor gathered for meals this was the minstrels gallery from where singers entertained nobles while they feasted if my dear lord is slain his fate i will share if he is hanged then hang me by his side if to the stake he goes with him i will burn and if he is drowned they let me drown with him dun de mans a 13th century french poem to be sung recounting the adventures of knights the first order the clergy the catholic church had its own laws owned lands given to it by rulers and could levy taxes it was that the very powerful institution which did not depend on the king at the head of the western church was the pope he lived in rome the christians in europe were guided by bishops and clerics who constituted the first order most villages had their own church where people assembled every sunday to listen to the sermon by the priest and to pray together everyone could not become a priest serfs were band as were the physically challenged women could not become priest men who became priest could not marry bishops were the religious nobility like lords 
who owned first landed estate, the bishops also had the use of first estate and lived in grand places. The church was entitled to a tenth share of whatever the peasants produced from their land over the course of the year, called a tithe, called a tithi. Money also came in the form of endowments made by the rich for their own welfare and the welfare of their decayed relatives in the afterlife. Some of the important uh, ceremonies conducted by the church copied formal customs of the feudal elite, the act of kneeling while praying with hands clasped and head bowed was an exact replica of the way in which a knight conducted himself while taking vows of loyalty or to his lord. Similarly, the use of the term lords for God was another example of feudal culture that found its way into the practice of the church. Thus, the religious and the lay words of feudalism shared many customs and symbols. Activity 2 discusses examples of expected patterns of behavior between people of different social levels in a medieval manner, a place and in a place of worship. Comment this. Monks, apart from the church, devout Christians had another kind of organization. Some deeply religious people choose to live isolated lives in contrast to clerics who lived amongst people in towns and villages. They lived in religious communities called abbeys or monasteries, often in places very far from human habitation. Two of the more well-known monasteries were those established by St. Benedict in Italy in 529 and of Cluny in Burgundy in 910. Monks took both to remain in the abbey for the rest of their lives and to spend their time in prayer, study and manual labor. Like farming and like priesthood, this life was open to both men and women. Men becomes monks and women runs nuns, except in a few cases all abbeys were single sex communities. That is, there were separate abbeys for men and women, like priests, monks and nuns did not marry. From small communities of 10 or 20 men or women, monasteries grew to communities often to several hundred with large buildings and landed estate. With attached schools or colleges and hospitals, they contributed to the development of the arts. Abbess Hildegard was a gifted musician and did much to develop the practice of community singing of prayers in church. From the 13th century, some groups of monks called friars choose not to be based in a monastery but to move from place to place preaching to the people and living on charity. The word monastery is derived from the Greek word monos meaning someone who lives alone. St. Michael's Benedictine Abbey in Franborough, England In Benedictine monasteries, there was a manuscript with 73 chapters of rules which were followed by monks for many centuries. Here are some of the rules they had to follow. Chapter 6 Permission to speak should rarely be granted to monks. Chapter 7 Humility means obedience. Chapter 33 No monk should own private property. Chapter 47 Idleness is the enemy of the soul, so prayers and sisters should be occupied at certain times in manual labor and at fixed hours in sacred reading. Chapter 48 The monastery should be laid out in such a way that all necessities be found within its bounds water, mail, garden, workshops. A Benedictine monk working on a manuscript would cut.
By the 14th century, there was a growing uncertainty about the value and purpose of monasticism in England. Langland's poem, Pierce, Blowman, 1360 to 70, contrasted the ease and luxury of the lives of some monks with the pure faith of simple plowmen and shepherd and poor common laborers also in England. Chaucer wrote the Canterbury Tales, the box below, which had comic portraits of a nun, a monk, and a freer. The church and society. Though Europeans became Christian, they still held on to some of their old beliefs in magic and folk tradition. Christmas and Easter became important deaths from the 4th centuries. Christ's birth, celebrated on 25 December, replaced an old pre-Roman festival. The date of which was calculated by the solar calendar, Easter marked the crucifixion of Christ and his rising from the dead. But its date was not a fixed one because it replaced an older festival to celebrate the coming of spring after a long winter dated by the lunar calendar. Traditionally on the day, people of each village used to make a tour of their village lands with the coming of Christianity, they continued to do this, but they called the village the parish, the area under the supervision of one priest. Overworked prisons welcomed holidays or holidays because they were not expected to work then. These days were meant for prayer, but people usually spent a good part of them having fun and feasting. Pilgrimage was an important part of a Christian's life and many people went on long journeys to shrines of martyrs or to big churches. A monk who traveled to distant shrines. When in April the sweet showers fall and pure the drought of Mars to the root and the small birds are making melody, they slip away the night with open eye. So nature pricks them and their heart and gives. Then people long to go on pilgrimage and palmers long to seek the foreign shrines of far of saints revered in various land and especially from every sire of England to Canterbury the Mech their journey. Geoffrey Chaucer the 1340 to 1400, the Caterpillar Trails. This was written in Middle English and the Bars is a translation in Modern English. The Third Order presents free and unfree. Let us now turn to the vast majority of people, namely those who sustained the first two orders. Cultivators were of two kinds, free presents and serfs from the verb to serve. Pre-present held their farms as tenants of the Lord. The men had to render military services at least 40 days every year. Present families had to set aside certain days of the week, usually three but often more. When they would go to the Lord's estate and work there, the output from such labor, called labor rent, would go directly to the Lord. In addition, they could be required to do other unpaid labor services like digging ditches, gathering firewoods, building fences, and repairing roads and buildings, besides helping in the fields when our children had to do other taxes, the spawn threads of cloth, made candles and pressed graphs to prepare wine for the Lord's use. There was one direct tax called a tally that king sometimes imposed on peasants. The clergy and nobles were exempted from paying this. And an English plowman, 16th century sketch. The plowman. Serfs cultivated plots of land, but this belonged to the Lord. Much of the produce from 
his this had to be given to the lord they also had to work on the land which belonged exclusively to the lord they received no wages and could not leave the state without the lord's permission the lord claimed a number of monopolies at the expense of his serfs serfs could use only their lord's mill to grind their flour his oven to bake their bread and his wine presses to distill wine and beer the lord could decide whom a serf should marry or might give his blessing to the serf's choice but on payment of a fee england feudalism developed in england from the 11th century the angles and saxons from central europe had settled in england in the 6th century the country's name england is a variant of angle land in the 11th century william the duke of normandy the present queen of england in descended from william 1 crossed the english channel with an army and defeated the saxon kings of england from this time france on england were often at war because of disputes over territory and trade Hever Castle England 13th century William 1 had the land mapped and distributed it in section to 180 Norman nobles who had migrated with him the lords became the chief tenants of the king and were expected to give him military help they were obliged to supply a certain numbers of knights to the king they soon began to gift some of their own lands to knights who would serve them just as they in turn served the king they could not however use their knights for private warfare which was forbidden in england anglo-saxon peasants become tenants of various labels of landholders factors affecting social and economic relations while members of the first two orders show the social system as stable and unchanging there were several processes which were transforming the system some of these such as changes in the environment were gradual and almost imperceptible others were more dramatic like the changes in agriculture technology and land used this in turn were shaped by and had an effect on the social and economic ties between lords and vassals let us examine these processes one by one the environment from the 5th to the 10th centuries most of europe was covered with vast forests thus the land available for agriculture was limited also peasants dissatisfied with their condition could flee from operations and take refuge in the forest europe was undergoing an intensely cold climatic spell in this period this led to severe and prolonged winter a shortened growing season for crops and reduced yields from agriculture from the 11th century europe entered a warm phase average temperatures increased which had a profound effect on agriculture peasants now had a longer growing season and the soil now less subjected to frost could be more easily ploughed environmental historians have noted that there was a significant receding of the forest line in many parts of europe this made expansion of the area under cultivation possible land use initially Agricultural technology was very primitive. The only mechanical aid available to the peasant was the wooden plow, drawn by a team of oxen. This plow could be best scratch the surface of the earth and was unable to fully draw out the natural productivity of the soil. Agriculture was therefore very labor-intensive. Field had to be dug by hand, often once in four years, and enormous manual labor was required. also an ineffective methods of crop rotation was in use the land was divided in half on field was planted in autumn with winter wheat while the other field was left fallow rye was planted on the space of fallow land the next year while the other half was put to fallow with this system the soil slowly deteriorated and famines will not uncommon chronic malnutrition alternated with 
devastating famines and life was difficult for the poor despite this hardship the lords were anxious to maximize their incomes since it was not possible to increase output from the land the peasants were forced to bring under cultivation all the land in the manorial estate and spend more time doing this than they were legally bound to do the peasants did not put quietly to operation since they could not protest openly they resorted to passive resistance they spent more time cultivating their own fields and kept much of the product of that labor for themselves they also avoided performing unpaid extra services they came into conflict with the lords over pasture and forest land and saw these lands are uh, as resources to be used by the whole community while the lords treated this as their private property new agricultural technology by the 11th century there is evidence of several technological changes instead of the basic wooden plow cultivator began using heavy iron tipped plow and mold board this plow could dig much deeper and the mold board turned the top soil property with this the nutrients from the soil were better utilized to the methods of harnessing animals to the plow improved instead of the neck harness of the shoulder harnesses came into use this enable animals to exert greater power horses were now better short with iron horse shoe which prevented food decay there was increased use of wind and water and energy for agriculture more water powered and wind powered mills were set up all over europe for purpose like milling corn and pressing grapes there were also changes in land use the most revolutionary one was the switch from two field to the three field system in this peasants could use a field two years out of three if they planted it with one crop in autumn and a different crop in spring a year and a half later that meant that farmer could break their holding in three fields they could plant one with wheat or rye in autumn for human consumption the second could be used in spring to raise peas beans and lentils for human use and oats and barley for the horses the third field lay fallow each year they rotated the use among the three fields with this improvement there was an almost immediate increase in the amount of food production from each unit of land food availability doubled the greater use of plant like peas and beans meant more vegetable protein in the diet of the average europeans and a better sources of fodder for their animals for cultivators in meat it meant better opportunities they could now produce more food from less land the average size of a peasant's farm shrank from about 100 acres to 20 to 30 acres by the 13th century holding which were say smaller could be more efficiently cultivated and reduce the amount of labor needed this gave the peasants time for other activities some of these technological changes cost a lot of money peasants did not have enough money to set up water mills and wind mills therefore the initiative was taken by the lords but peasants were able to take the initiative to many things such as extending arable land they also switched to the three field rotation of crops and set up small forges and smithies in the villages where iron tipped plows and horseshoe were made and repaired cheaply from the 11th century and the personal bonds that had been the basis of feudalism so were weakening because economic transaction were becoming more and more money based lords found it convenient to ask for rent in cash not services and cultivators were selling their crops for money instead of exchanging them for other goods to traders who would then take such goods
to be sold in the towns, the increasing use of money began to influence prices, which became higher in times of poor harvests in England. For instance, agricultural prices doubled between the 1270s and the, one, and the 1320s. A fourth order New towns and townspeople expansions in agriculture was accompanied by growth in three related areas population, trade, and towns. From roughly 42 million in 1000, Europe's population stood at 62 million around 1273 million in 1300. Better food meant a longer lifespan. By the 13th century, an average European could expect to live 10 years longer than in the 8th century. Women and girls had shorter lifespan compared to men because the latter ate better food. The towns of the Roman Empire had become deserted and ruined after its fall, but from the 11th century, as agriculture increased and became able to sustain higher levels of population, towns began to grow again. Peasants who had surplus grain to sell needed a places where they could set up a selling centers and where they could buy tools and clothes. This led to the growth of periodic fairs and small marketing centers which gradually developed town like Fetcher, a town square, a church, roads where merchants built, shops and homes and offices where those who govern the town could meet in other places. Towns grew around large castles. Bishops' estates or large churches in town, instead of services, people paid a tax to the lords who owned the land on which the town stood. Towns offered the prospect. Activity 3. Look carefully at the map and the drawing of a town. What would you notice as special features of medieval European towns? How were they different from towns in other places and other periods of town? Time other periods of time come in this. Reims French Cathedral Town 17th century map of paid work and freedom from the Lord's control for young people from peasant families. Town air makes free was a popular saying. Many serfs craving to be free ran away and ho and Hid in towns, and a serf could stay for one year and one day without his lords discovering him, he would become a free man. Many people in towns were free prisons or escaped serfs who provided unskilled labor. Shopkeepers and merchants were now numerous. Later, there was need for individuals with specialized skills like bankers and lawyers. The bigger towns had populations of about 30,000, they could be said to have formed a fourth order. The basis of economic organizations was the guild. Each craft or industry was organized into a guild and association which controlled the quality of the product. Its price and its sales, the guild hall, was a feature of every town. It was a building for ceremonial functions and where the heads of all the guilds met formally. Guards patrolled the town walls and musicians were called to play at feast and in civic processions, and innkeepers looked after travelers. By the 11th century, new trade routes with East Asia were developed. System 5 Scandinavian merchants were sailing south from the North Sea to exchange furs and hunting hawks for clothes. English traders came to sell tin. In France, by the 12th century, commerce and craft began to grow. Earlier, craftsmen used to travel from manor to manor. Now they found it easier to settle in one place where goods could be produced and traded for food. As the number of towns grew and trade continued to expand, town merchants became rich and powerful and revealed the power of the nobility. Cathedral towns. One of the ways that rich merchants spent their money was by making donations to churches. From the 12th century, large churches called cathedral 
were being built in France. These belonged to monasteries but different groups of people contributed to their construction with their own labor, materials or money. Cathedrals were built of stone and took many years of complete as they were being built. The area around the cathedral became more populated and when they were completed, they became centers of pilgrimage. The small towns developed around them. Cathedrals were designed so that the priest's voice could be heard clearly within the hall where large number of people gathered and so that the singing by monks could sound beautiful and the chiming bells calling people to prayers could be heard over a great distance. Stained glass was used for windows. During the day, the sunlight would make them radiant for people inside the cathedral and after sunset, the light of candles would make them visible to people outside. The stained glass windows narrated the stories in the Bible through pictures, which illiterate people could read. Salisbury Cathedral, England Because of inadequacy which we often felt on feast days for the narrowness of the place forced the women to run towards the altar upon the heads of the men with much anguish and noisy confusion we decided to enlarge and amplify the noble church. We also caused to be painted by the equestic hands of many Masters from different regions have splendid varieties of new windows because these windows are very valuable on account of their wonderful execution and the profuse expenditure of painted glass and sapphire glass. We appointed an official master craftsman for their protection and also a goldsmith who would receive their allowances, namely coin from the altar and floor from the common storehouse of the brethren and who would never neglect their duty to look after these works of art. About Sugar 1081-1151 About the Abbey of St. Denis near Paris Stained glass windows Chatters Cathedrals France 15th century The Crisis of the 14th century by the early 14th century, Europe's economic expansion slowed down. This was due to three factors. In Northern Europe, by the end of the 13th century, the warm summer of the previous 300 years had given way to bitterly cold summer session for growing crops were reduced by a mouth and it became difficult to grow crops on higher ground. Storms and oceanic flooding destroyed many farm streets which resulted in less income in taxes for government. The opportunities offered by favorable climatic conditions before the 13th century had led to large-scale reclamation of the land of forest and pastures for agriculture, but intensive plowing had exhausted the soil despite the practice of the three-field rotation of crops because clearance was not accompanied by proper soil conservation. The shortage of Pasturage reduced the number of cattle, population growth was outstripping resources, and the immediate result was famine. Severe famines hit Europe between 1315 and 1317, followed in the 1320s by massive cattle deaths. In addition, trade was hit by a severe shortage of metal money because of a shortfall in the output of silver mines in Austria and Serbia. This forced government to reduce the silver content of the currency and to mix it with cheaper metals. The worst was yet to come. As trade expanded in the 13th and 14th centuries, ships carrying goods from distant centuries had started arriving in European ports. Along with the ships came rats carrying the deadly Bebonic plague infection, the Black Death, Western Europe, relatively isolated in earlier centuries, was hit by the epidemic between 1347 and 1350. The modern estimate of mortality in the epidemic is that 20% of the people of the 
whole of Europe died, with some places losing as much as 40% of the population. How many valiant men, how many fair ladies had breakfast with their kinfolk and the same night supped with their ancestor in the next world? The condition of the people was pitiable to behold. They stricken by the thousand tally and died untended and without help. Many died in the open street, others dying in their houses, made it known by the stench of their rotting bodies. Consecrated churchyards did not suffice for the burial of the vast multitude of bodies which were heaped by the hundreds in first trenches like goods in a ships, hold and covered with a little out. Giovanni Boccaccio 1330-75 to Italian author. As trade center, cities were the hardest hit. It enclosed communities like monasteries and convents. When one individual contracted the plague, it was not long before everyone died, before everyone did, and in almost every case, none survived. The plague took its worst toll among infants, the young and the elderly. There were other relatively minor episodes of plague. In the 1360s and 1370s, the population of Europe, 73 million in 1300, stood reduced to 45 million in 1400. This catastrophe, combined with the economic crisis, caused immense social dislocation, dispopulation, resulted in a major shortage of labor, serious imbalances were created between agriculture and manufacture because there were not enough people to engage in both equally. Prices of agricultural goods dropped as there were fewer people to buy. Wage rates increased because the demand for labor, particularly agricultural labor, rose in England by as much as 250% in the aftermath of the black debt. The surviving labor force could now demand twice their earlier wages. Social unrest. The income of the Lord was thus badly hit. It declined as agricultural prices came down and wages of laborers increased. In dispersions, they tried to give up the money contracted they had entered into and revive labor services. This was violently opposed by peasants particularly the better educated and more prosperous ones. In 1,323 peasants revolted in Flanders, in 1,358 in France and in 1,381 in England. Though these rebellions were ruthless craft, it is significant that they occurred with the most violent intensity in those areas which had experienced the prosperity of the economic expansion and sign that present were attempting to protect the grains they had made in previous center centuries. Despite the severe present, the sheer intensity of present opposition ensured that the old feudal relation could not be reimposed. The money economy was too far advanced to be reversed. Therefore, though the lords have succeeded in crushing the revolt, the present ensured that the feudal privilege of early uh, days could not be reinvented. Activity poured it through the events and process listed with dates and connect them into narrative account. Comment this. 11 to 14 centuries. 1066 Normans defeats Anglo Saxons and conquer England. 1100 onwards. Cathedral beings built in France. 1315 to 17. Great famine in Europe. 1,347 to 50, Black Death, 1,338 to 1,461, 100 years were begin between England and France. 1,381, Peasants' Revolts. Political Changes Queen Elizabeth I of England at a picnic late 16th century.
developments in the political sphere, parallel social processes in the 15th and 16th centuries, European kings strengthened their military and financial power. The powerful new steps they created were as significant for Europe as the economic changes that were occurring. Historians have therefore called these kings the new monarchs Louis XI in France, Maximilian in Austria, Henry VII in England, and Isabel and Ferdinand in Spain were absolutist rulers who started the process of organizing standing armies, a permanent bureaucracy and national taxation and in Spain and Portugal began to play a role in Europe's expansions overseas. See them. The most important reasons for the trump of these monarchies were the social changes which had taken place in the 12th and 13th centuries the dissolutions of feudal systems of lordship and vassalage, and the slow rate of economic growth and had given the first opportunity to kings to increase their controls over their powerful and not so powerful subjects. Rulers dispensed with the systems of feudal levies for their armies and introduced professionally trained infantry equipped with guns and siege artillery theme. Um, directly under their control. The resistance and the aristocracy scrambles in the faces of the fire powder, firepower of the kings. The new monarchy 1461 to 1559 new monarchs in France 1474-1556 new monarchs in Spain 1485 to 1547 new monarchs in England by increasing taxes. Monarchs got enough revenues to support larger armies and thus defended and expanded their frontiers and overcome internal resistance to royal authority centralization. However, did not occur without resistance from the aristocracy a common thread running through all types of opposition to the monarchies was the question of taxation. In England, rebellions occurred and were put down in 1497, 1536, 1547, and 1549, and 1553. In France, Louis XI, 1461-83, had to waste a long struggle against the dukes and princes, lesser nobles, Often members of local assemblies registered this loyal un usurpation, royal usurpation of their powers. The religious wars in France in the 16th century were in part a contest between royal privilege and regional liberties. The nobility managed a tactical shift in order to ensure their survival from being opponent to their new regimes. They quickly transformed themselves into loyalties. It is for these reasons that royal absolution has been called a modified form of feudalism. Precisely the same class of people who had been ruler in the feudal system, the lords continued to dominate the political scene. They were given permanent position in the administrative service, but the new regimes were different in some important ways. Neymar's Castles, France, 15th century. The king was no longer at the apex of a pyramid where loyalty had been a matter of personal dependence and trust. He was now at the center of the elaborate courtier society and a network of patron client relationship. All monarchies weak. A or powerful needed the cooperation of those who could command authority. Patronage became the means of ensuring such cooperation, and patronage could be given or obtained by means of money. Therefore, money became an important way in which non aristocratic elements like merchants and bankers could gain access to the court. They lent money to the kings who used it to pay the wages of soldiers. Rulers thus made space for non-feudal elements in the state system. The latter history of France and England was to be shaped by these changes in the power structures in the region in the reign of the child king. 
Louis XIII of France in 1614. A meeting was held of the French Consultative Assembly known as the State General with three houses to represent the three estates or order, clergy, nobility and the rest. After this, it was not summoned again for nearly two centuries. till 1789 because the kings did not want to share power with the three orders. What happened in England was very different. Even before the Norman conquest, the Anglo-Saxons had a great council which the king had to consult before imposing any tax. This developed into what was called the parliament which consisted of the House of Lords, the members of which were the Lords and the clergy and the House of Commons representing towns and rural areas. King Charles I ruled for 11 years, 1629 to 40, without calling Parliament when he was forced to call it because he needed money. A section of Parliament decided to go to war against him and later executed him and established a republic. This did not last long and monarchy was restored but on the condition that parliament would be called regularly. Today France has a republic and former government and England has a monarchy. This is because of the different direction that the historians of the two countries took after the 17th century. Exercises answer the brief answer in a short essay. Comment this.